The CSS Grid is an incredibly powerful tool and we'll explore one use case in today's video. So stick around. In a previous video, we explored creating a two column layout where one column was contained within the boxed area while the other column broke out and stretched to the edge of the screen. In that video, we used the CSS Flex with some width calculations. If you've not seen it, I highly recommend that you go and check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But in today's video, we're going to see something even more powerful and more flexible, which is using the CSS Grid. If that's something that interests you, then stick around and I'll show you how it's done. To use the CSS Grid in Elementor, you have to activate the Grid Container feature by going over to Elementor, Settings, and then head over to Features, and you see where it says the Grid Container. Currently, it's at beta version. So you have to activate that, and then at the bottom, you can see where it says Save Changes. And once you've done that, head over to your page, and then we'll start creating it together. Here on the Elementor Edit page, the first thing you need is to create your grid container. So click on the plus icon, choose the grid and the two column grid. Then next, change the content width under the layout tab from the boxed to full width. Leave the width as 100%. Then the grid outline, we can get rid of that because sometimes it affects how the custom CSS is shown on the edit page. Then for the columns, we're going to be using custom CSS. So change it from FR to the pencil icon. And we're just going to be referencing this variable name called var double iPhone underscore DD grid calls. For the rows, we change it to auto. Then the gaps set it to zero because we're going to be using custom CSS to set the actual gap between the containers. So now go to the advanced tab and set the padding to zero because we want it to sit flush to the edge of the screen so that the image can touch the edge of the screen. And then under the CSS classes, we'll give it a block class name of DD Mixed Grid. Next, let's start adding our child items. So I'll click on the plus icon. First, I'll choose the container, set it to full width. Click on the plus icon again, choose some heading widget and maybe a text editor widget. Let me give the container a background color so we easily see it. Style tab. I'll choose this background, light blue. Next, I'll click on the grid container again and this time I'll choose an image as the child item. So now we have a container and an image. So for the image, let me go ahead and put in an image. I'll put this one in. Remember to put an alt text for your images because you might be able to see it clearly but someone who is vision impaired or relies on an assistive technology he needs to be able to listen to hear what the image is all about so try to put in a descriptive text that explains the image for somebody who is blind but for this example i will not be using any alt text because it's just a demo so let's continue next under the style tab Set the width to 100% and then the height, I'll also set it to 100% so that it sits flushed to the edge of its grid area. Then the object fit, I'll set it to cover and center center is fine. And let's publish it. So now we have our two child items within the parent grid. Now we can go ahead and start adding our custom CSS. So I'll go back to the grid as the parent. The custom CSS we're going to be adding in next, I'll leave a link to it in the description below so you can check it out. But the CSS is divided into two portions. We have one that is called the site-wide CSS. That's basically the CSS that will be affecting all the different blocks on the page because maybe we want to have like multiple rows on the page. So that one will like be the base settings for all of them. Then we have the second one, which is the section specific CSS. That one is like a control that basically modifies each of the blocks. So usually you will put this in your general CSS area where you put your CSS like your code snippets plugin, WP code box, code snippets pro, your child theme, or even your elemental site settings, the custom CSS there if you have that available to you. But for me, I'm just going to be using the custom CSS within the widget itself. So I'll copy everything 
and set it on the first parent container. So this one, advanced tab, custom CSS, and I'll just paste everything there. Now we employ the power of the CSS grid on the child item. So basically grid column for each of the child items. But unfortunately, Elementor has not yet implemented the grid columns on the child items. So you have to use custom CSS for that. So you just click on the first item, which is the container. Advanced app, we'll have to use custom CSS. So all you just say is selector, grid, column. And this time we just say, it's going to be the first column. So call one and it's going to be boxed. So say boxed. That's it, it's now boxed. The image itself too, we'll do the same thing under the advanced tab, custom CSS, selector, grid, column. This time it's called two and it is stretch. So now when we see it on the preview, we have the box column and the stretch column. And the two of them are totally independent of each other. So you can easily chop and change, mix everything up. So let's say you want both of them to be boxed. All you have to do is just change the name from stretch to boxed and both of them will be boxed. So it's easy to just chop and change all of them. That's what the powerful aspect of the grid because each of them is now independent items. So you can literally change them however you want. If you want the first one to be stretched, you want both of them to be stretched, you want both of them to be boxed, they will all just reflow because everything is calculated by the parent container. But rather than having to use custom CSS here, because some people may not have access to Elementor Pro to be able to add all these custom CSS, a nicer way I've done is that I've just created modifier classes which you can just apply to each of the child items and then it will reflect this same CSS on those child items. So what do I mean by that? Let's get rid of all the CSS. So for each of the child items, I'll just get rid of the CSS. And this time we'll be using the BEM naming convention. So basically go to the layout tab. So for the first one, which is the text widget, we want it to be on the left and we want it to be boxed. So all we have to do is say, the block name which was given as dd mixed grid then we have to choose the element name so now we have to do double underscore that's for the element now is the call one and then double hyphen to say what are we modifying so we want it should it be boxed or stretched we want it to be boxed so just say boxed and we have that one as boxed for the image advanced tab the CSS classes, we do the same thing, dd, mixed, grid, double underscore, we'll say call two, and then double hyphen, and this time we want it to be stretched because it's the image, so stretch. And if we publish it and view it, we get the same example. So now all we have to do now is change for each of the specific sessions. So rather than doing some work, I'll just duplicate this first because we're going to be using it again for the second one. So we'll just duplicate it. And then on the second one, the advanced tab, custom CSS, we can get rid of the other parts because we don't want to just have duplicate CSS, just basically a waste of time. So now we have just the section specific CSS on this section, section specific CSS on the other section. So go to the first section, now that the custom CSS, initially I put them as class names. That's in case you don't have Elementor Pro, then you can just put this class name to the first section, change the values. So this will now be like your code snippets plugin. But since I have Elementor Pro and I have access to the widgets custom CSS, I can replace this as selector. And then now, Let's say I don't want the gap to be 1M, I can want it to be 2. So now it's bigger. If I want it to be in pixels, I can say 20 pixels. And then it's like that, and so on and so forth. But for this example, we want them to be flushed to each other and then want them to overlap. So all you have to do is set them to a gap of 0. But because the gap value is being used in a summation or an addition, we cannot say 0 without any unit. So we have to give it a unit. 
So we have to say zero, then give it any unit you like. So I'll just say pixels. Then rather than 40% for the first column, I want it to be 45%. Then let's see it. So yeah, that's 45% by 55%. Now I want them to just be filling their own height. We don't want it to fill the height of the entire container. So what do we do? We go to the parents grid under the layout tab. You see the align items. So for that align items, you see this is start. It shows you that both of them will now be having just their own height to the start. So if you click on that, they just take up their own height, but to the start, she set it to the center. Then they go to the center and go to end, but the default is stretched. So that's why it's stretched. But we want it to be the top. So choose start. Then now the next thing we want to do is that we want them to overlap. The beauty of CSS grid, like I said before, is that each of the individual items in the grid area, they are independent of each other. So Whenever we're trying to move things to the right, we don't need to do any negative margin. Just increase the height of this container and it will basically move it to the right. It will not have any impact on the second grid. So let's watch what I do. So on the layout tab, all you have to do is just increase the width to whatever value you want. So let's say 110% and it's stretches to the second container and it doesn't affect the second grid area because the two grid areas are independent but you notice that it is not actually showing because it is behind the image because on the html structure the text comes first before the image then the image has a higher stacking order than the text if you want to reverse it then all you have to do is on the container for the text go to the advanced tab you'll see where it says the z index just increase the z-index to something other than zero. So let's say two. And then it now goes above the image. And like I said, it doesn't have any impact on the image. So you can go to the layout tab and even increase it as much as you want. So if you keep increasing it, like this time, let's say we want it to be 150. It will increase and it will not have any impact on the image itself. That's the difference between grid and flex for grid once the parent has defined the grid areas then what is inside the grid don't impact each other it's like they are separate from each other but with flex no matter how you do it on the parent container the two child items will always interact with each other unless they are having a position of absolute then they will go out of the flow so now that we have this rather than using fixed values i already set up a custom variable so just change it to the pencil icon and I'll just say calc 100% plus that overlap value that I want so that's var dd overlap you can actually change the overlap value by going to the parent container advanced tab custom css you see where I set the var dd overlap here so let's say you want it to be 4m and that's it so let's publish this and finally we just want to see if it is mobile responsive so let's check the tablet it looks okay then on the mobile typically we want the images to be at the top of the text so let's do that for this as well and to get the image to be at the top you have one nice property which is the order so just click on the image then under this advanced tab you see where it says order all you have to do is set it to the start and immediately it basically pushes it to the beginning of the layout but in the html it will still be where it is because you can't just move it from the navigator here once you move it from the navigator here then when you go back to the desktop you see that everything changes and then you start to wonder why is it not mobile responsive usually the only when you see the mobile icon here that is when if you change it here it doesn't change in the tablet view or the desktop view but if you don't see this icon whatever you change here will change in both mobile tablet and the desktop view so now that we have that let's now try to make them to overlap so to overlap the two items 
because you want it to overlap upward then you need a negative margin what do i mean so on the text container go to the advanced tab for the margin let's unlink it just set a negative top margin and then to keep going up and it will not affect the other container so all you have to do then rather than setting a fixed value we we'll just do the same thing pencil icon and this time we want to reference the variable but we want it to be a negative value so you say calc minus one multiplied by var dd overlap and then we got that overlap and we want it to not just fill the entire because now we don't really know that it is overlapping so let's reduce the width a bit to reduce the width all you have to do is go to the layout tab and this time when you see 100 percent let's just change it to like 95 percent and now it has this value currently the two sections are overlapping each other so let me go back to the desktop and just give it a margin value for the grid so that you can push away from the other container usually you will have like some fixed values in your style guide that you have for your space between different containers but i'm just going to use a random number today so I'll just use a positive bottom margin of maybe 80 pixels just so that it pushes away from the other container it doesn't break the layout if you see everything is fully responsive so now let's go over to the second container this time if you see from the example the image is on the left and then the text is on the right so that's what we're going to do and we have an overlap and it also has a kind of push down of the text to the bottom so let's go ahead and do all of that so now we choose the second grid this time we want the image on the left so i'll move the image physically to the left but well, you notice that nothing happens because that's how grid works because we've already set it up that the first item should take up call two so all you have to now do is go back to your css classes for your image this time we want it to be call one so change the column from call two to call one we want it to still be stretched so it's call one and stretched but we want the text to be the column two so advanced tab and now change it to call two and now we have the image on the left and the text on the right let's go ahead and change some of these css styles again so the parent grid advanced tab custom css this time we we'll set the gap to zero pixel again but we have to change it to selector because i gave it a class name so selector so we have that now this time it's supposed to be 40 percent for the image and 60 for the text so it's correct 40 60 then we want it to be to the bottom so go to the parent grid layout tab align items and then set it to bottom or the end then for the overlap for the left portion we have to add in a negative margin so container the advanced tab the margin just unlink it and choose the pencil icon we want the left margin i'll just reference the overlap value so calc minus one multiplied by var dd overlap the overlap has been reset for this container so you have to now go to this container check under the advanced tab custom css and set the overlap for this container itself we want it to be the same for rem so I'll just leave it as for rem as well the next thing we want to do is to move the text downward a bit now if we use negative margin for bottom or right what happens is that it's going to push in the other element inward into it which may not be what you want because let's see for an example let's click on this container and then set a negative bottom margin of maybe minus 20 pixels you see that it actually goes down and you might think that oh yes you've done something great but when you create a new container and then let me just give it the background color 
you notice that okay let's give it a higher z index layout tab so advanced tab under the z index let's give it two you notice that it is now overlapping with the next container if that is what you want with an overlap then this is fine because that's what negative margin does it basically creates an overlap but if that's not what you want you just want some actual space between them then rather than putting a negative margin on the text you would instead put a positive margin on the image so let's go to advanced tab and just get rid of this negative margin now it's back to the top now watch what happens when we put on the image a positive margin for the bottom let's unlink it and say the same 20 pixels you see it actually moves uh, the image down and then there is no overlap so that's what we actually want let me also give a margin to this container itself so we can also give this a bottom margin to so let's say let's unlink it and give that 20 pixels as well or 80 so now we have that space again below the container so that's what happens negative margins usually overlap items whereas a positive margin creates an actual space so that's the difference between positive and negative so it all depends on how your layout wants to look like so let's publish this and the final thing we want to do is to check the responsiveness so on tablet i think it looks good then on mobile now the layout looks funky because of all the margin values you put so that's why you have to be watching out for ma negative margins because it creates this kind of weird layout where things go off the page so all you have to do is just reset everything so for the image we set the margins to zero for the container we set the margins to zero so now everything now is back to normal so for this one I want it to go upward and a bit to the right so how do we do that so on the container we give it a negative top margin so let's unlink it we can reference that variable so we'll say calc minus one multiplied by that variable var dd overlap so it has gone up now we want it to shrink and then go toward the right so layout tab same thing we we'll give it maybe a 95 percent width to get it to the right all you can just do is use a margin of auto so advanced tab just set the left to have a margin auto that will push it to the left there are other ways but this is the easiest way to do it just say margin left auto then we will publish it we now have our second layout so you can now preview everything on the front end so here we have the first layout and the second layout with that overlap if you check it basically it keeps going well gets to the mobile and it switches and it is mobile responsive and yeah so that's just a tip of the iceberg for how powerful the css grid is it makes layout complex layouts look so easy because at this first stage when you are creating the layout it might look very hard but once you've done your homework properly then using it multiple times on the page becomes so easy and all you have to just do is change the positioning of let's say grid one to grid two to grid four and everything just adjust accordingly without having to stress yourself too much if this video has helped you out please do leave a like share the video write your comments and i'll see you in the next one bye